I have chosen Marie Guillermin Benoit for this presentation. She is interesting because she first exhibited at the age of 16 at the Salon's annual One Day Outdoor Youth Exposition. It is believed she displayed a portrait of her father and two head studies. Secondly, she was the first woman to exhibit a history painting at the Academy Salon when it opened to women in 1791. And thirdly, she was successful as an artist while straddling the 18th and 19th centuries, times of great change politically and artistically in France. She was born in Paris in 1768. She was the daughter of a civil servant, which meant he was employed by the Ancien Regime, or the old regime, the social and political system before the 1789 French Revolution. Her artistic training began at 13 when, with her younger sister Marie Elizabeth, she worked under the tutelage of Rococo neoclassicist artist Elizabeth Lebrun. When Lebrun closed her studio, the sisters entered the atelier of Jacques-Louis David, the most celebrated neoclassicist of the time. They are two of three females ever accepted to the studio. Her self-portrait shows the artist copying David's Belisarius begging for alms. The self-portrait shows us a few things about Benoit at this time in her career. Comparing it to her former instructor's self-portrait at left, Benoit doesn't hold just the tools of the artist, but shows herself in the act of painting. In doing so, she tells the viewer, I can mimic the great artist W. She portrays herself as a neoclassicist in her costume, a Greek-style gown and wrap with no hat and loosely styled hair. In 1783, female membership in the academy topped out at four. To avoid other women attempting to apply for membership, the academy closed off all future admittance for females. They reasoned that four women are sufficient to honor the talents of female artists who can never be useful to the progress of the arts. Marie continued to exhibit at the outdoor exposition. While still working under David in 1787, she exhibited her first narrative painting. It was a literary scene from a popular novel, Clarissa or the History of a Young Lady, that had been published in 1748. No copies of this painting are known to exist. The Academy Salon remained unavailable to her until it reopened post-revolution in 1791, when it was decided that all, regardless of gender or member status, would be allowed to submit. Benoit and her sister were among the 22 women exhibiting at that year's show. Let's look at two of the first female history paintings to be accepted for display at the Salon. In the first, the farewell of Psyche to her family, Psyche, dressed in white, gives her mother one last embrace. Her father bows his head in woe, while her sisters comfort each other. This scene relates to the tale of Psyche leaving her family to be abandoned on a desolate rock to meet her bridegroom, a monster capable of laying waste to the whole realm. This episode from the story of Psyche is one of personal and familial sacrifice for the safety of the kingdom and the public good. It is extraordinary in comparison to the way Benoit's male contemporaries treated the myth. They portrayed later episodes from the same story that allowed for more erotic depiction possibly an excuse to portray graceful nudes. This more obscure chapter with family drama and family sacrifice, female sacrifice rather, offers a glimpse of the utopian possibilities that the French Revolution promised but would not quite deliver. This was a timely theme in the revolutionary year of 1791. In the second painting, Innocence Between Vice and Virtue, Two female allegorical figures, innocence at the center, clings to virtue at right. A male figure, vice, lunges at innocence, grasping part of her gown as if to disrobe her. Importantly, Benoit portrays vice as a male, previously displayed as a female in other depictions. These two history works, displayed by a female, showed a pivotal moment in the revolution. 
the participation and rights of women as citizens were being argued in broader society. This led to pressure for the Academy to allow all to submit regardless of gender or membership status. There continued to be disparagement regarding female artist talent and ability at this time. Critical reaction differed to Benwell's first salon showing. One reviewer says, I did not think that a woman was capable of such a historical composition, moreover, with this degree of perfection. Another, reacting badly to the admittance of women, called them brazen to be undertaking the study of art of painting, at the same time suggesting that Benoit could not have produced her works alone. He declared them made by 36 hands. The critics cited objections to women rendering the human figure as immoral, but paradoxically suggested that women did not author their own work. The Artist's Life Beyond Marriage Marie marries the lawyer Pierre Vincent Benoit in 1793. His work takes him to India shortly after their marriage. Due to the extremely tumultuous and chaotic politics of the time, he is to be arrested if he returns to France. In an ironic twist, Jacques-Louis David signs a warrant for his arrest. When her husband is allowed back to France in 1795, Benoit can exhibit once again at the Salon. Her career will grow significantly. She is in demand as a portrait artist and receives commissions from the Bonaparte family. She re receives an award from the government and is granted lodging at the Louvre. In 1804, she receives a gold medal at the Salon as well as a state allowance. Following are some of the examples of her work in this time frame. These first two portraits are thought to have been displayed at the salon, salons of 1799 and 1802. The style and styling is clearly neoclassical. This slide shows portraits of two members of the Bonaparte family. They are stylistically quite different. The portrait of the young girl shows a bit of Rococo in its coloration and use of nature, while the portrait of Eliza Bonaparte is intended as a neoclassic court portrait. Benoit was also in demand for portraits of men, especially those of the military. While they appear to be official commissioned portraits, they effectively also communicate personality. I include the portrait of her brother-in-law, the surgeon of the Imperial Guard, the portrait on the left, because of his association to her most famous work. Benoit painted a, a servant of her sister and brother-in-law's household. Here we see her most famous and well-known portrait, Portrait of Madeline from 1800. Originally titled Portrait of a Negress, it depicts a former slave, now a free black woman, employed in her sister's household. She is shown in a dignified pose similar to Mad David's Madame Recamier. Why did Benoit choose this subject in this pose? There has been a lot of speculation about it. Is it a feminist icon? Is he showing it as a comparison of different social statuses of Madeleine and Madame Recamier? Is it a display of her expertise in her treatment of skin tones? Or is it simply artistic research in contrast between the dark skin and the light background? We will never know with certainty, but the artist showed a willingness to challenge conventions by portraying a black woman as the central subject of an elegant and dignified portrayal. In conclusion, when the monarchy is restored in 1815, her husband is eventually appointed as Council of State. Marie retires from her career as a painter so as not to overshadow her husband. She eventually stops painting altogether. Her last painting is thought to be the fortune teller. We can read into it some parallels to her Innocence Between Vice and Virtue of 1791 at top left. Duplicating the figures of one man and two women with the man appearing to be up to some mischief. There are similarities in the coloration as well. Despite restrictions forced upon her due to her gender and time and place in history, her commitment to her craft, daring choice of subjects, and her lasting impact 
on the art world are a source of admiration. Thank you.